that's what's more fun for me. I like. spent most of my life as an Kira Knightley's fragile beauty, pale skin and high cheekbones has seen her carve out a niche as a corseted lady in period dramas. But her desire to be challenged professionally has also seen her star in modern dramas, action flicks and a slice of comedy. Born to an actor father and playwright mother, Kira was a girl who knew what she wanted. She asked for an agent at age three and got one at six. Kira's first big break was when she was cast as the decoy queen in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, because she looks so similar to Natalie Portman. But it's her rough and tumble tomboy ways that first got her noticed in the little independent British film turned global smash, Bend It Like Beckham. I loved it. It's sort of really girl power and that, you know, it's so great because I think um, there's a big thing in England about girls not being able to play football. And it's just a great script to say, yeah, we can all do this, you know, and it just shows everyone that I think, you know, football's a game for everyone and, you know, it's something, it's something that everyone can do and, and find fun. And also, I mean, it was amazing because the whole thing is about a girl breaking out of her community and trying to do something else, which I think everyone can relate to. Part of Bend It Like Beckham's success internationally was due to the film's re-release in the States after Pirates of the Caribbean proving to be a huge hit at the box office. Kira's gutsy performance as the no-nonsense Elizabeth Swan received great reviews, although the workload turned out to be bigger than she'd expected. Because when I first read the script, I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. I'll, I'll sit in the back of carriages, I'll wear pretty dresses, I'll pout a bit, you know, it'll be fine. But actually, I've had a lot of, a lot of stunt work to do, um, which, for somebody as lazy as me, has been rather challenging. It seemed that Kira enjoyed the challenge, doing more of her own stunts, when she took on the role of Guinevere in King Arthur. In preparation, she went to boot camp, where she learnt horse riding, sword fighting, archery and boxing. I, I was lucky enough to actually have two, two or three weeks off prior to the big fight scene. I thought, well, I can either go home and chill out with friends or I can actually learn how to do all these fights. So I did. I spent three weeks and, and trained every day. Um, and, and got rather good, I have to say, and really, really enjoyed it as well. So, yeah, it was important for me to do it. I kind of figure what's the point in playing this role if you don't want to do the action. In 2005, Kira starred in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, and her performance earned her a Best Actress Academy Award nomination. The news broke on the set of Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. So what did her hotshot co-stars Johnny Depp and Orlando Bloom have to say about her nomination? No, he just laughed at me. Yeah, he's, they've all been taking the piss out of me mercilessly from the day that it happened. Every single time that I do a take, they go, oh, was that an Oscar-nominated take then? <laughs> With all jokes aside, Kira then went on to star in The Edge of Love, a film about two feisty, free-spirited women who are connected by their mutual love of brilliant, charismatic poet Dylan Thomas. The screenplay was developed by Kira's mother, Sharma MacDonald, and during the writing process, she never imagined Kira for any of the roles. When Kira decided that she was going to pick up the script and run with it, and I have to say, she was only 17 when I started writing it. 16, maybe, 17. So I didn't think of her for any of the parts. Although maybe at the back of my mind, I thought films take long, 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 long journeys. So it may be that by, by the time this is made, if it's ever made, she'll be old enough to play. Kaplan was what I was thinking. When she said that she loved the script, I didn't ask her to pick it up, she picked it up, um, and she wanted to be part of it, I said, OK, well, it's Kaplan that you should play. And no, I'm not playing that. She doesn't speak to me. I think... I think that acting is a very instinctive profession and I think that you have to be very truthful to, um, yeah, you have to stick to your instincts. And for some reason, when I first read the script, I was, I completely fell in love with Vera in, in her subtlety, in how quiet she is. I don't think she's a particularly dramatic person, but I, I felt her emotions very keenly. This dramatic tale of poetry and heartbreak explores unconventional arrangements of love and sex. 
So did that cause any issues for Kira, being the daughter of the script writer and all? Uh, you mean that she dared to put a sex scene in it? Yes, I did. <laughs> Shocking. Um, I don't really know how to answer that. Uh, this is a, it's a story about relationships. It's a story about how friendship um, can be ruined over um, an act of betrayal in the form of, of sex. I mean, you're not going to really get out of the fact that there is going to be sex involved in it. Um, it certainly didn't worry me that my mother actually knows what sex is. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. In the business of making movies, actors are expected to maintain a certain level of maturity. Yet, while filming a love scene on the period drama The Duchess, Kira had a momentary lapse in concentration. Love scenes are never exactly the easiest thing in the entire world, and um, Dominic Cooper uh, <laughs> was wearing a skin-coloured diaper all the way through, and I couldn't stop laughing. I actually, actually started crying with laughter, and the director had to sort of come over to me and say, look, you have to pull yourself together, this is getting a bit much. <laughs> so I probably ruined him for life. With Pride and Prejudice, Atonement and The Duchess, Knightley's proven herself as the actress of choice for period films. No, you know, I mean, I, I think that's what I love about doing period films, is that you can take these people who have lived kind of about 300 years ago, who dressed in these ridiculous ways, who lived in these very different societies, and yet you can still completely understand them today. You know, you can still look at them and, and totally get the, the things that they're going through. So I, I think that's kind of wonderful because you get a sort of fantasy aspect where you can dive into the film and it's not what we experience on a day-to-day -day level and yet you completely understand on an emotional level what they're all going through. Becoming a master of all things emotional, Kira skipped back to the present for the romantic drama Last Night. Acting as one half of an endangered marriage opposite Aussie Sam Worthington, the film follows the couple through a rocky patch in their relationship, surrounded by ample temptation. I think it was it was really interesting that it didn't take a moral standpoint. Um, I think very often in films, you know, you have a goodie, you have a baddie, you're told what to think. And this is a film that requires the audience to, to make their own minds up, to, to put their own experience into the piece. And, and, and I love that. At home churning out dialogue-driven pieces, Kira would again step out of her comfort zone for a dangerous method. This deep and intriguing film dissects the origins of psychoanalysis and its creators, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Knightley plays the hysteric and mentally unstable Sabina who becomes the first patient of Freud's methods. This required a fair amount of crazy, so it was very fitting that eccentric director David Cronenberg was coaching her every step of the way. How do you get the balance of crazy? Um, you you work with David Cronenberg and you kind of go, I know that if I go too far, he's going to pull me back. You know, I mean, he sort of, he was incredible right at the beginning of this because he sort of gave me complete free license. He was like, look, go away, figure out what you want to do. And he's, he totally, he steered every every moment of it. But, you know, but it was, it was just a kind of question of trying to figure out she's crazy at the beginning of the film, whatever that means, you know, but, but in her own head, she's completely, lo there is logic, you know, there's complete logic. So it was a process of sort of trying to see it totally from her point of view. From correcting crazy to the madness of the apocalypse, the demise of human existence is usually something that is not surrounded by humour, right? Well, in Seeking a Friend for the End of the World, there are plenty of jokes about Judgment Day. And Kira's untapped comedic skills luckily emerged just in time before the end of the earth. No, I think I think what I loved about the script and hopefully what's good in the film is that, you know, it makes it very clear what's important in life. And I think, you know, when, when you've got 20 days left, actually what's important is the people around you, you know, the friends, the loved ones, the wonderful moments. It was weird kind of coming to the end of the script and reading it and going, God, this is incredibly uplifting and positive for a film that's about the end of time. Always a fan of the classics, Kira's next project was starring in the screen adaptation of Tolstoy's legendary novel, Anna Karenina. And after all these years, what makes this story such a timeless gem? You know, it's a tragic love story. Um, love not just being romantic, not just being kind of happily ever after, but being also something that can be incredibly lonely, um, incredibly... Uh, can cause jealousy, can cause pain, can cause madness, you know, I mean, it's really looking at love as a whole thing, not just as that kind of romantic aspect. As comfortable in a pub with mates as she is gracing the cover of Vanity Fair magazine, Kira Knightley has had a meteoric rise to fame. Kira's willingness to challenge herself and completely immerse herself in every character she plays has earned her the enviable position of both being loved by fans and desired by directors. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. 
broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.